In this video, we're going to make these cute, adorable bunny ears gift bags. So easy, anybody can make them. So let's get started. All you're going to need is this simple pattern. It's available for free from our website and the links on the screen in the description below. So simply pop along and get one and print it off. Now you'll see on page two, there's actually a little square box that's a test square. And if you can't get it exactly one inch by one inch, don't worry, your bag will just be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So don't worry too much about that, but it gives you a guide. So then cut out the two pieces and then we're simply going to glue or sellotape them together. So you'll see it says on there just to line it up against the dotted line, just like that, and then glue it or sellotape it in place. And you've got your simple pattern piece. And then you want your two bits of fabric if you want a different color ear on the inside, a different lining to your bag, which I think most people do. So take whatever you want to use for the outside of your bag and fold it because the bottom of your pattern piece, the straight edge at the bottom, wants to go against the fold of your fabric, just like I'm doing here. Now, if your pieces of fabric aren't big enough to do that, simply cut two out without the fold and maybe make them a bit longer and sew them together. So you'll end up with the same size piece at the end. Now you'll see I'm using pins because it's just ordinary cotton fabric. If you want to use a very fine fabric, you might want to use pattern weights and you'll see a link in the description about how to make those and then cut it out. Don't add anything extra on, your seam allowance is included, so literally cut around the pattern piece. And you should end up with a piece that looks like this. So you've got a bunny ear on either end of your fabric piece. And then once you've got one out of the outer fabric, you're going to repeat the whole process for the lining. Now this might be where you've chosen a lovely satin to give little silky ears, in which case don't use pins because they tend to pull it. So just weight your pattern down and cut it out. But once you've cut this piece out, that's everything cut out and ready to go. So again, it should look exactly the same as the other piece. And then what we're going to do is put the two pieces together. Now make sure if you've got a right and a wrong side that the two right sides are facing each other. And that's really important, so just check before you start pinning or clipping them together. So work your way around the whole of the pieces, just clipping or pinning them together. It's just gonna keep them together while you sew them at the machine. Now, if they don't line up exactly perfectly, don't worry, it just means your cutting out wasn't perfect. Most of us aren't. And then once you get down to the second long side, just remember we need to leave a section to turn it out. So I mark it using longer clips. You could do whatever you like. Just make sure you know not to sew that inner section there. So you're going to need about three, maybe four inches so you can turn it through easily. And then you're gonna sew around the rest. So you must remember to leave that gap. So when you're over at the machine, start your sewing at one of your marks and go forward a little bit and then reverse and go back. Now this stops your sewing coming undone and gives it a nice secure finish. Sew along to that end of the straight edge and then make sure your needle's in the fabric, lift the foot and turn to work your way around that curve. And that's just gonna give you a nice corner there. And then ease the fabric around that curve. Just take your time and do it slowly if you're new to this. Curves can be a little bit tricky but just take your time. You're just easing it round. As you can see, that's what I'm doing. And then work your way right round to the point of your bunny ear. And then again, make sure the needle's in, lift the foot and turn the whole lot round. And just keep working all the way round. Now, some of you will be saying how far in from the edge. To be honest, it doesn't really matter because the bag isn't, it's not crucial size. Um, but I'm probably, I don't know, three eighths of an inch maybe in from the edge. And again, just keep turning at all your corners, making sure you lift the foot. And then when you get back to your other marker, you're just gonna sew so that you've still got that gap. And then it's leave the needle in, reverse, and then down again. And now you've sewn all the way around except for your turning gap. 
So then before you think about turning it out, we're just going to do a little bit of clipping. So at each of your corners, you want to clip the corner off. Don't get too close to your stitches. We don't want to risk cutting them. And then wherever you've got a curved edge, I recommend doing some snipping in towards your stitching. Again, take your time. You don't want to clip your stitches. Don't get too close. And at the point of each bunny ear, just cut the point off. Now, all we're doing here is reducing the bulk so that when you turn it through, you get a much better finish. So if you don't want to bother, nobody's going to check up on you, but it does give you a better finish. So once you've done all of them, it's time to turn it out. I turn one end all the way through and then turn the other end all the way through. I just find it's easier than trying to get them competing in that little hole. So once it's all through, we want to get some good corners and some good finishes. So you want something that's not too sharp. You don't want to poke through your stitches. And I do recommend a chopstick or a blunt pencil, something like that. And just use it to poke through those corners and work your way around your seam. And it's just going to make it so much easier in a moment because you want those good edges. And you can see them appearing. So once it's starting to look like this, we're going to press it to get those edges nice and crisp. Now, you've got to remember you've got a small section that is actually open. So you need to make sure that as you're pressing, that edge is folded in and lined up because it won't necessarily sit there naturally. So as if by magic, mine is pressed and you'll notice I'm now on top of my ironing mat because I forgot to come back to the sewing pad. But anyway, you can now simply go back to the machine and run a row of stitches along there. No one will ever see it. it'll be inside the bag. But if you want it to be super neat, you can do what I'm doing here, which is a little ladder stitch or a slip stitch. So just get your needle with a knot on and pop it inside to come out like that. And then just take a little stitch from each side, one after the other, a little bit of the lining and a little bit of the outer. And you just work your way along. And what this will mean is that it's a completely invisible seam. So as I say, this will be inside the bag, so you don't need to. You could just run it along the machine. And then when you get to the end, your final stitch should be needle through the loop to secure it. And then I just put the needle through just so it gives a little bit of length of thread after the knot. If you're enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up so it spreads to more people and we can fill the world with bunny ear treat bags. And we're nearly there. All we need to do now is do that, turn it into a bag. But of course we want to stitch it so no one sees the stitches. So make sure that you fold it so that your lining is on the outside and then just line those edges up. So you can pin or you can clip them together. Just keep making sure it's lined up. You're going to do one side and then the other. If yours don't line up perfectly and they're maybe not perfectly straight, don't worry. It really doesn't matter. No one will ever know. And then it's over the machine over the machine, over to the machine to sew along those seams. So you'll see that I tend to work from the fold. Lots of people would work the other way from the end where the edges come together. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you. You'll also notice you're working through some quite thick material here, potentially, depending what you made your bag out of. And sometimes your machine will not want to feed it along. And if it doesn't, simply lift the foot slightly and just ease the fabric through and away you go. Now, do be careful doing that. Don't get too rough with it. You only want to ease it a slight distance and make sure at either end you're doing your reversing because you do want this to be nice and secure. It's what's holding your bag together. So then you'll not be shocked to learn that the next step is to do the other side. Again, making sure that reversing is done at either end. And then we've got a bag, but it's inside out. So simply turn it through. And again, you might want to use your chopsticks to get those corners to poke through. You might be all right just with your finger, which is what I've done here. And you've now got a treat bag. Now you could decorate them or you could have decorated them before you sewed them, but I like them plain. And all that's left to do 
to put your goodies in and then simple little knot of the ears and you've got your Easter Bunny treat bag. Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy making them for your friends and family. So happy sewing. <laughs>